depending on what vehicle we drive or however we get to the races, kind of dictates what options and resources I have to use for like food or going to the bathroom and different things like that. So uh, last minute decision to race this weekend, we're heading up to uh, XC208. It's a series in southeastern Idaho and uh, they have a sprint duro in Blackfoot today. So we're gonna head up there. Um, pretty much decided yesterday that we're going racing. So for food today, I just packed uh, one of my favorite protein shakes, just some protein powder, peanut butter, honey, um, oats, uh, one banana, just a lot of kind of dense um, breakfast carb foods like that, packed into one protein shake. So I've got that right here. So that's what I'm gonna be having for breakfast. I packed a couple peanut butter and honey sandwiches and uh, those are kind of what I'm gonna use to fuel this morning. Last night I had pasta. I had some Cajun chicken pasta that I cooked up at home. So kind of sticking close to what I traditionally do, pasta the night before. And uh, often I'll do oatmeal, bananas, oatmeal, banana, eggs for uh, breakfast. That's what I traditionally do. So we're gonna combine the oats and the bananas into, into a shake and skip out on the eggs. You could uh, take hard boiled eggs, that's a really good option too, so we're on the road. lined up ready to roll we just signed up we're all ready to roll um, so the way this format works is we have two special tests we have one over there west test one over here the east test we have to race the west test six times the other one five times so we can do them in any order we want there's no transfers we can go at any time so the race just opened it's 11 and we have until four o'clock, so five hours total to complete all the tests. So we're gonna jump onto the GoPro right now. Here we go. We're on the bike now. Get out of here. Oh, my butt sore. Going to the gym yesterday. Put the GoPro in my pants. I 
I just went off of it and it was just straight rev limiter. I was just, and it pitched me like, I, I couldn't, I didn't even double the first one. So it's like my front tire hit the landing of the, of the second one. So I was trying to double it and my front tire hit it and then it just, then I just freaking beat it. Well, it's just not really my day, I guess. I started, as you guys just saw, I started the first test and had a super weird incident where just crashing the whoops out of nowhere. I think I, I think I, I started in the second, went around the first two turns and tried to just double into the whoops and I think I was stuck in gear between second or third and totally freaking yard sailed. And so that just spooked me and since then I've been kind of taking it easy and um, kind of got some momentum back and some confidence back. I've done this test a couple times, but yeah, I'm just gonna try and finish out the day at this point and not try and surprise anybody else by biffing it in the whoops. But we've done this test a couple times now, about halfway through the day and we'll go knock out the other tests. Well, we're back in town now. We left this morning, drove up to just outside of Blackfoot, Idaho, raced the Sprint Duro and drove back an hour home. Pretty crazy day. Uh, just wasn't really going my way today. Just got off to a really bad start, which usually I'm pretty comfortable coming out of the gate pretty good and usually set some of my fastest times in test one or test two when I race Enduros. But today just didn't go like that. I, I had a pretty big crash right at the beginning of the day. We can kind of go back through that GoPro footage and I'll talk about what happened. Hey guys, how's it going? We're in the studio now slash my bedroom and we're gonna review this crash to find out what happened. So I watched it back and the crash occurs 18 seconds into the first test, which is ridiculous. I mean, at that point, I'm not even like, I'm, I haven't even got to the point where I'm like trying to fill out the dirt or anything. I'm literally just barely getting started. Just, it's like you're waking up out of bed or something. I mean, it's 18 seconds into special test one. It's just super early. Like it happens so fast. It just totally, totally caught me off guard. So this is at a XC208 Sprint Enduro hosted at a some property at a little uh, motocross track just west of Blackfoot, Idaho. And we they incorporated part of a small motocross track into the course. And whenever they incorporate motocross tracks into off-road races, typically the motocross track does not play that big of a role for the most part, especially on races like this where probably, I mean, there were like 10 minute tests and you spend like 20 seconds on the motocross track. So the vast majority of your racing is in the off-road. So I anticipated this, like going into this race, I know that, that the motocross track's not even gonna be a big deal. We signed up, I, uh, we walked the track. So I had a very good uh, kind of expectation of what was coming on this little section right here. So we'll roll the footage. I roll up to the start right here. They're using some transponders. Um, the live lap system on the phones count me down here we go ready to race and take off so they had thrown a little bit of water on the track it wasn't ripped so it was really slippery first time out i'm just trying to kind of get my breath feel out the dirt so we make a left hand right hand turn roll onto this straight carrying some speed sweeping right hand turn just gonna do this little tiny double oh psych boom hit the ground just like that, I mean, so fast, it was crazy. So let's back it up, talk through what happened here. So coming around this sweeping turn, so I started the test in second gear. The crash occurred because I either got stuck in neutral or stuck in gear, I don't know. But I started the test in second gear. I've been doing that lately on the 450 just because it. Uh, I just shift so early and they have so much low end that you can pull second gear easy out from a dead stop. So I've been starting my special tests lately in the Enduros in second gear. It's been working really good. It's not quite as, ag it doesn't sound quite as aggressive, but it helps me carry a lot of speed into the first turn. And I'm not so concerned about taking off the line very fast. I'm always looking at the first turn and seeing how I can just set up and start getting into the flow state after that. So I start this test second gear make the left turn second gear make the right turn second gear i actually go all the way down this straightaway in second gear so i'm still in second gear at this point and i'm coming around this corner and i think what i tried to do is i'm kind of standing up leaning and shifting while standing up is a little bit difficult 
uh, especially for if you're just learning to ride a dirt bike. But I've been riding for a while, so I should know how to shift standing up. Um, so I think I'm trying to shift right here, and I try and click, and I don't know. It could have been a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I'll confess that I did race the weekend before, and I didn't change my oil in my bike. I had just one race weekend on the oil, and typically I change my oil um, every race and like every other ride. I usually change my oil pretty frequently, but this was just a small race, kind of scrambling to get ready. I was like, you know what? I mean, I probably have like four, four to five motor hours on that oil, maybe. Granted, they were race hours, but it wasn't super intense, like like sand racing. It was like single track in the mountains in Arizona. So I don't think the oil broke down that much. So it that's what I thought. Um, after the fact, after this occurred, maybe the oil broke down a lot more and that caused something. Another thing that's probably playing the biggest factor in this is I, although I warmed up my bike, um, just... Uh, sitting there I didn't really shift through the gears very much like I literally rode from the truck as you guys were just watching rode from the truck pulled over to the start line and then took off so um, there's a couple different factors there I could have warmed up my bike a little bit better so essentially what happens is I'm coming around this turn try and shift and somehow I get stuck in gear I hit a false neutral and I jump this jump because this first double because of it I have enough speed and I land right here and in a way, the false neutral thing didn't really cause me to crash. It was more what my body weight did anticipating using the motor when it wasn't there. If you watch Supercross guys, um, sometimes when they make mistakes and they, get, they hit a false neutral in the air, one of the biggest things that happens is the endo. They hit a big, big jump in the rhythm section or they hit a triple and they get stuck in gear. What always happens is they endo. And the reason is because Using the gyroscopic effect of your rear tire in the air can really control um, how you land and the angle of your bike. If you give it more gas, it spins the rear tire more, causing more force on the rear end and brings the rear end down. If you chop the throttle or tap the brake and stop the rear wheel from spinning, then you have less gyroscopic force and you bring the front end down. So when you get stuck in gear going off of a jump, you no longer have that rotational force on the rear end, and so you often end up. These were small enough jumps that that's not actually what happened here. I, I cleared the first jump. What happened is I cleared the first jump, landed, and was attempting to accelerate again for the second one when I was there was no motor there. There was nothing. It just revved, just revved out. So totally stuck in gear. So all my weight that's anticipating moving forward gets thrown into the front of the bike unloads the rear tire, puts all that weight on the front tire, and that just sort of initiates kind of a washout. My rear end gets unloaded and starts to slide. My front tire slides out, and as you watch right here, looks like I kind of bounce all the way up on the front tire. I mean, I'm staring at the fender and the rear tire right there, and bounce off to the right, and you can see how it just ejected the rear part of the bike. I mean, you can see the foot peg, you can see the the seat in the frame here so if you can see it in the frame it's clear off of i mean i'm nowhere my legs are nowhere near that so just totally get bucked off hit the dirt all on my right side my right shoulder my right thigh all that hits the dirt and knocks my gopro camera off picked up my bike pretty uh, spooked after that um kind of sucked to to crash that early into a race but sometimes things happen and you just kind of learn from it. So kind of moving forward, I'll make sure that kind of entering special tests, I'll make sure that my bike is 100% warmed up. Um, and probably if I'm competing at this level now, that I'll always have fresh oil in my bike either way, just as a precaution. I don't know if that played a very big role in this. Who knows? I think mostly it was just it's a combination of multiple different factors there. So that is a great example of how to not start a special test. So don't do that. Try and learn from it. If you enjoy content like this and you're interested in learning additional skills that can take your off-road riding to the next level, check out our complete off-road riding course at ridewiththenights.com. With 50 videos and over seven hours of dense moto training, it is the tool every rider needs 
to learn proper riding technique and start riding faster and safer. Head on over to ridewiththenights.com, watch the free 30 minute training to get a sneak peek inside the course and you can get 20% off. See you there.